What's up? It's your boy Carcino here saying don't forget at the end of the video or when you're done, you can click the link in the description box, leave a donation, leave an email, phone number, contact me or however you needed to be contacted, and we can go from there. Now, moving right along, people always tell me something about pop. What's about Pac and this? So I get a lot of those. Now, we've done probably the most Tupac videos and told every story that people have heard and some have never heard. But clarification, this guy say, Tupac was going to sign Alanis Morissette to his label. Tell me about that. Why you didn't tell us about that? I'm like, I thought I covered it, but in case I did not, let's go over it. Alanis Morissette had the, what was that, the Little Pill album, and that album was small, like, it came from nothing, like, they were hoping to make some money off that album and pay for another album, she had already put two albums out, they didn't really do nothing, and this didn't look like it was gonna do too much early on, and she had little small shows, and it just caught fire and became like one of the second largest selling albums <laughs> from a female artist. It sold like 16 million copies, 33 worldwide, 33 million copies worldwide. It was a monster album. Now, during this time, Tupac is putting out his album. So he has all eyes on me. And while that album is out, Tupac loves, and people, this is what y'all don't understand, Tupac loves music. Like, not just rap. He listened to everything. Especially, and this is why his own people, the outlaws, didn't understand where was he getting his music from, and he's listening to weird stuff. What he was listening to was songs that were selling or popular more than his. What they didn't understand is that Tupac reads Billboard like a Bible. Tupac used to read the Billboard charts and see whose songs were ahead of him. If the songs were ahead of him, no matter if they were R&B, country, or whatever, he wanted to know about the artist. He wanted to listen to the artist. He wanted to know what this artist was about. And he wanted to know what they had going on. He went and listened to Alana's album and was like, it's amazing. He, man, he was all caught into it. And he'll play the music while he's driving. He'd be all into it. Jamiroquai, he listened to them and was like, man, like, this is something. This song here, this is going to be something. Y'all don't know nothing about this, but yeah, this is going to be something. And this was in 95. I think Cosmic Girl, or one of them was out, or Space Cowboy. He was playing all that stuff. He knew, because he got an ear for music. So when he actually met Alanis, and they actually talked, I forgot where they met. But they actually chilled. She smoked with him and it was down to earth and she wasn't bougie and he loved that. And was like, oh, we finna do work with Alanis. So he told Shug, yo, hook it up. We finna do some work with Alanis. And Alanis Tupac record gonna be huge. So he was so excited about it. He was so excited about working with Alanis because she was already huge in the field. And then Tupac had just sold, like, what, five million records? <laughs> you know, so he's like, look, I'm getting next to Alanis. You know, this is really finna take me over the plateau. Like, we finna really do some big things. So, but I don't know about the being signed part. A lot of people was like, oh, he was going to sign her. That's what it was about. And I don't know, he was trying to hit that. Pac was Pac wasn't trying to hit everything that moved, dog. He actually was 
actually in love with the music. You know, and that's why I told y'all the beef thing was just getting out of hand to the point where he didn't even want to do it no more. He didn't want to do it no more. He was going to quit rap and take a break and go into acting and do somewhere. He's like, man, I get to escape. And I ain't got to be Tupac. I could just be any character. I can escape. No, I don't have to do this. You know, like I could take a break from it because he made so many albums so that he could space it out where he could take breaks to go film this movie. I can go film that and I can still, I still got my albums done. And most of those records, like we weren't even supposed to hear. Some of those records weren't even finished. They were like demos. But once he died and we hearing it all now, they just flying them out. It's got Tupac on it, put it out. But all those disc records, all that stuff he did with, with the uh, Outlaws album and, and the Machiavelli, that was it. He was, he had songs that he was doing that was way different. That was on the level of me against the world. Letter to my firstborn. Who do you believe in? All of these records that you were hearing was going to be on his new album that was coming out. And all of them were radio songs. All of these songs were content driven what he calls an introspective album and that was the album he's like i know what the ladies want i know what the people want they want me to make another like me against the world type of album and don't worry like it's coming you don't even gotta ask for it or beg for it it's already coming i'm gonna deliver that to you so we heard it in bits and pieces, but he was making that out. You know, it's just his work ethic is what I admire the most because I work like that. Work, 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 work. Push, push, push. That's how I go. I'm like, yeah, I feel like if I slow down, everybody else is gaining on me. You know what I'm saying? So I keep it current. I'm too fast with internet. <laughs> but anyway, man, uh, I want to thank y'all too. Y'all really been like supportive of me uh, with the donations, everything, man. All of you guys, man, I appreciate all the love y'all give me, man, and the support. And y'all make me grind hard, get up in the morning and start grinding it out early. <laughs> I don't know when y'all gonna get this video though. The video might not come out to the afternoon. But hey, we made it. 